真富贵，真阳引领真火，今天真你啦！建设、富强、民主、文明、和谐、美丽的社会主义现代化强国，努力奋斗。On August the 8th, 2008, the opening ceremony of the 29th Olympic Games was held at the National Stadium in Beijing, the Bird's Nest. In building the stadium, 110,000 tons of steel had been used. This was equivalent to a sixth of the country's annual steel output in the early days of the PRC. Today, the stadium is a popular place to visit. It stands as a testament to China's soaring progress. In 1908, the magazine Tianjin Youth addressed the issue of China's interest in the Olympic Games. The article posed three questions. When would China send athletes to the Olympics? When would a Chinese athlete win an Olympic gold medal? And when would China host the Olympics? These three questions would preoccupy people for many years. In 1932, the 10th Olympic Games were held in Los Angeles. At the time, Japan was occupying China's three northeastern provinces, where it had established the puppet Manchukuo regime. In the hope of gaining international legitimacy, the Manchukuo authorities asked the International Olympic Committee for permission to send a team to the Olympics. This provoked so much popular outrage in China that the Kuomintang government hurriedly assembled a team. There were just six members, including the sprinter, Liu Changchun. And so, for the first time, China participated in the Olympics. Answering the first of the three questions had taken 24 years. China failed to win any medals in that first appearance, but it learned the lesson that the stronger the country, the better it would do in the Olympics. China, if it was to achieve its Olympic aspirations, would first have to realize its people's dream of a strong and prosperous country. But to poverty-stricken, war-torn China, that dream seemed distant. The very first gold medal of the 1984 Los Angeles Olympics was won by marksman Xu Haifang. For the first time, the five-star red flag was raised above an Olympic stadium. 
Answering the second of the three questions had taken 76 years. In the course of the next 16 years, in the five Summer Olympics from Los Angeles in 1984 to Sydney in 2000, China won a total of 223 medals, including 80 gold. Now the Chinese people could dare to dream of hosting the Olympic Games. The Games of the 29 Olympiad in 2008 are awarded to the city of Beijing. The announcement caused emotions to run wild all across China. People could finally feel a close affinity with the Olympics. Answering the third of the three questions would take 100 years. On TV screens around the world, people everywhere watched as the dream of the 1.3 billion Chinese people came true. Many tears of joy were shed that night. Under the bright light of the Olympic flame, over 2,000 years of Olympic tradition merged with 5,000 years of Chinese history. The result was a stunning opening ceremony that blended ancient and modern, east and west. flame lit up the night sky and stirring music filled the stadium. The spectators waved flags and cheered. Around the world, four and a half billion people followed the event live on TV. These were truly exceptional games. Thank you. Merci. Merci. During the 16 days of the Games, Chinese athletes performed better than ever before, winning a total of 100 medals. For the first time, China secured more golds than any other country. Through the Beijing Summer Olympics, the world saw China in a new light. People witnessed a country that was rapidly developing, vibrant, open, and charming. Not long after the Beijing Summer Olympics ended, financial services company Lehman Brothers filed for bankruptcy protection in the U.S. This was the first shock in a financial crisis that would shake the entire world. Having begun in the financial sector of the developed world, the crisis soon spread to the developing nations and the real economy. Its impact was on a greater scale than anything experienced before.
China was not immune. The Pearl River Delta has one of China's highest concentrations of export-oriented small and medium-sized businesses. Many of them were hit hard by the crisis. In the first quarter of 2009, China's economic growth fell to 6.4%. Both exports and imports saw negative growth. The Chinese government reacted by adjusting its macroeconomic policies and adopting measures to increase domestic demand and stabilize employment. Internationally, it worked actively with other countries to formulate a number of initiatives. These included reform of the global financial system. China was one of the first countries to emerge from the downturn. Economic growth continued through 2009, when GDP increased by 9.4% compared to the year before. In 2010, it exceeded 40 trillion yuan, or 6.1 trillion US dollars. This meant that China had surpassed Japan to become the world's second largest economy. China has maintained its position as the world's second biggest economy. It has contributed far more to global growth than any other country. As the main engine and source of stability for the global economy, it gave the international community hope and confidence that the difficulties could be overcome. The international financial crisis highlighted the need for China to embrace greater innovation in its economic development. Since the beginning of the reform and opening up, China has consistently identified science and technology as the main source of productivity. The powerful focus on scientific innovation would transform the economy and society. Hu oh, Wei Wu is a computer system developer. When it became clear that China needed to develop its own computer processors, he decided to bring together a team to make it happen. In 2001, with the support of the State Knowledge Innovation Program, the Institute of Computing Technology under the Chinese Academy of Sciences established a team led by Hu, dedicated to CPU development. China produced its first universal processor, the Godson One, in September 2002. It ended the country's reliance on foreign processors in manufacturing computers. In 2010, Lung Song set up an operation in Beijing's high-tech hub, Zhongguanzun. There, it began the rapid development of a new generation of CPUs. On March the 31st, 2015, Lungson processors were sent into space as part of the Beidou satellite navigation system. China was confident and on the move. However, as the country spread its wings ready to soar, inevitably it encountered challenges. The flooding of 1998 the SARS epidemic, earthquakes. In facing various natural disasters and other crises, China not only prevailed, but actually strengthened itself. This was made possible by the fighting spirit of its people.
The Qinghai Tibet Railway extends for 2,000 kilometers past Qinghai Lake in northwest China, through the Guangzhou Tunnel and across Ho Zil and the Tangula Mountains. It connects the formerly inaccessible Qinghai Tibet Plateau with the Chinese heartland. It's the highest railway in the world and, at 1,956 kilometers, the longest across a plateau. It was opened on July the 1st, 2006. With the completion of this ambitious project, Tibet, which accounts for one-eighth of China's territory, was finally connected to the nation's railway network. It took six years to build and involved a workforce 100,000 strong. In the extreme conditions on the snow-covered plateau, they performed feats of great heroism. Much of the work was done in inhospitable, high-altitude areas, where the workers needed to carry oxygen tanks weighing five kilos each. Two hundred scientists and engineers were at the front line the entire time, working to resolve the technical problems caused by the harsh environment and low oxygen levels. A particular problem was permafrost. Many of the solutions the engineers came up with to deal with it were world firsts. When Princess Wen Cheng traveled to Tibet in the 7th century AD, it took her three years to get there. Today, trains travel from Beijing to Lhasa in just three days. These once faraway places are no longer so distant. Great projects, such as the Qinghai Tibet Railway, serve to accelerate the momentum of China's development. They also demonstrate the country's strength. Another major project would turn deep gorges into a quiet lake. This is the world's biggest water control project. It's also the greatest mass engineering project ever undertaken in Chinese history, the Three Gorges Dam. As long ago as the early years of the 20th century, Sun Yat-sen had proposed building such a dam in the international development of China. Mao Zedong brought up the idea again after swimming across the Yangtze at Wuhan in 1956. Deng Xiaoping, when he was briefed on the potential of such a dam in 1982, exclaimed, if we're certain, then we should act and never waver. It's a day that will forever be remembered by history. On April the 3rd, 1992, the proposal to build the Three Gorges Dam was passed at the fifth session of the 7th National People's Congress. The dream of over a century was coming true. Construction began on December the 14th, 1994.
二十九号，三峡工程左右岸二十六台发电机组全部建成投产，比计划整整提前一年完成投产目标。目前，三峡水。In October 2008, 26 of the Three Gorges Dam's generators went online. 一千瓦时是世界上最大的电站。By August 2009, the project was virtually complete. By preventing flooding, the dam made life along the river safer. It brought other benefits too, in the form of generating power and improving shipping and water resource management. People living along the river now had unprecedented opportunities for their development. But for the dam to be built, 1.3 million people had to abandon their homes. Dashi village in Chongqing lay at the mouth of the Chutang Gorge. Ran Ying Fu had been working as a boatman on the river since he was 15. But this voyage was different. He was transporting his family of nine and 256 other villagers to Changfang County in Anhui province, 1,000 kilometers away. It would be his last time at the helm of his boat. <laughs> For generations, these families had lived beside the river and made a living from it. Now they were leaving their homes for the greater good of the country. The banyan trees on the banks bear witness to their sadness, but also their determination. To see the grand spectacle of the Three Gorges Dam today, is to remember the sacrifice made by those people who gave up their homes for it. Nor must the countless workers whose labors have helped China soar ever be forgotten. The two bombs, one satellite project, as it progressed throughout the 60s and 70s, gave China confidence in its abilities in the field of science. It also fueled the popular imagination that the country would venture into space. In September 1992, China officially launched its manned space flight program. The greatest and most technically challenging project in China's space program was underway. Sixty-year-old Wang Yongzhe was the chief engineer. Fifty-nine-year-old Qi Fa Ren was the chief spacecraft engineer. The two had been among the most brilliant young scientists working on the two bombs, one satellite project. Now they were facing the greatest challenge of their lives. They were guiding the latest generation of young scientists into a new era. Like 宁可动用部分的国库的黄金储备，也要把这件事干下去。And so China began building its own manned spacecraft, the Shenzhou. In late autumn 1999, an unmanned test launch of Shenzhou One 
was conducted at the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. Jiuquan became the world's third site to conduct manned spaceflight launches after the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan and the Kennedy Space Center in the US. On November the 20th, 1999, Shenzhou 1 left the Earth's atmosphere. With its successful return 21 hours later, China marked a major breakthrough in its manned spaceflight program. The launch of Shenzhou-1 was the fruit of nearly a decade of intense efforts by more than 110 academies, 3,000 supporting companies and institutions, and 100,000 people. Soon after that first launch, preparations began for a manned spaceflight. On October the 12th, 2003, astronauts Yang Li Wei, Jai Zhe Gang, and Nie Hai Sheng arrived at Jiu Quan. Two days later, 10 hours before the launch, Yang Li Wei was notified that he had been selected to pilot the Shenzhou 5. was a historic moment. <laughs> After 590 seconds, space welcomed its first Chinese visitor, Yang Li Wei. Twenty-one hours and twenty-three minutes later, after orbiting the Earth fourteen times, Shenzhou 5 returned. Young had completed humanity's 241st trip into space. China had become the third country in the world to launch a human being into orbit. That year, Qian Xuesen, the man known as the father of China's space program, was 92 years old. It was 50 years since he had first proposed sending someone into space. In 1967, Qian had coined the Chinese word for spaceflight, Hang Tian, navigating heaven. Since 1956, several generations of spaceflight engineers had devoted their time, effort, and knowledge to achieving the dream of navigating heaven.
个水球，像这样一个透镜，透过它，你们还可以看到我的倒影呢。China's manned spaceflight program is continuing to progress steadily towards its goals. Spaceships, spacesuits, space stations, space-grown food. Technologies that used to seem unachievable have now been developed in China. China has become a spacefaring nation. 这一成就，再一次向世人昭示：中华民族是勤劳、智慧、富有创新精神和创造能力的民族，是自强不息、勇于战胜一切艰难险阻的民族，是爱好和平、积极为人类和平与发展的崇高事业。不懈奋斗的民族。